Welcome to the Community Collective Podcast, a flip-flop agent production in collaboration with the Davison Area Chamber of Commerce. I am your host, Johnny B. Good. Welcome to another episode of the Community Collective Podcast. I am one of your hosts, the amazing flip-flop wearing, flip-flop agent with Remax Edge and Davison. And thankfully today, I am joined by my partner in crime. I had to miss the last few episodes and that bummed me out. So I am super excited to be here with Mr. Travis Howell, the executive director for the Davison Area Chamber of Commerce. Podcast extraordinaire, you might say. Mr. Howell, (laughs) how are you doing this evening, my friend? I am doing really good. I will say this is something I've looked forward to all day. Not only do I get to chat with you, but one of our really good friends. So Johnny, it is always a pleasure to to be with the original flip-flop agent. That's um, right. The OG, as some might say. I've been around <laughs> the block for a bit, so I got the tan lines to prove it. They even, tan lines are strong enough, they stick around even in winter. So yeah, enough about me. I'm over here bumping my gums. We have in the green room at the moment, a very exciting guest, a fellow board member for the Downtown Development Authority there in the city. And you know what? Probably one of the biggest fans of the Davison community that I've ever met. When I moved here in 05, Paul and his wife, Deanna, were just so welcoming to my wife and I. And we did a lot of work back in the day with Davison Dog Park. And so I'm just so excited to have Paul on this afternoon because he's just one of those people in the community that there's just always that level of support there that we so drastically need, especially during these times. Again, I might have had a little too much coffee this afternoon, so I'm going to (laughs) take a back seat and I'm going to let my good friend, Mr. Howell, take it over, do some introductions and let's kick this episode off, my friend. I'm excited. Uh, Over the past few years as well, my wonderful wife and I have had the opportunity to really get to know Paul and Deanna Snyder really well. Um, So today we're joined by Paul. Uh, So Paul, how are you today? I'm doing great. And guys, thank you so much for the kind words. I truly appreciate it. So Paul and his family, for those of you who maybe don't know, which would probably be really rare, owns a wonderful store in downtown Davidson called Elixir. So Paul, the first thing we want to, we really want to start off with is fill us in on your background. What have you done? What type of areas have you worked in? What got you where you are today? I tell you what, it's the majority of the time has been in retail. I was out of a job at one time. A friend told me to check into a position at the mall. I went and applied, got the job and the rest is history. So 15 years at one company, five years at two companies, and now it'll be 15 years here in at Elixir. And so we're looking at 40 years. That is amazing. Right there, that sh- you probably have a wealth of knowledge just in that retail industry that in my head, you should probably be doing your own podcast on how to run a successful family-owned retail store. That's what I think. And well, I'll be the first I one to start appreciate- listening, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, but I'd probably put my wife on if that were the case. I'd let her be the one. She's the one who yeah. does a great job with this. Oh, you know what? It, you'd be a, a dynamic duel. So fill us in. It's Elixir. I guess we'll start off with this. What encouraged you and your family to start your own business? From way back, I've always wanted to own my own business. Had no idea what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be, but it led us here to Davison, and it only made sense for us to uh, do retail with all the experience we have. So Deanna's been in retail for seven years. She's great. got a great fashion sense with our kids. They definitely help out a lot as well, too. So it just, like I say, it just, it just flowed. It was just perfect. So now, how did you come with the name Elixir? Explain this. How did you figure out what avenue or how you wanted to design your store? How, any, everything like that. I want to know it all. <laughs> Deanna's going to explain to you the origin of the name Elixir Clothing. Hi. Uh, yes. So with Elixir, I, we weren't really sure. We knew probably reach clothing. That's what we had both done. Did you guys remember the company Merry-Go-Round that used to be in the malls years ago? I don't myself. Oh, okay. 
So it was just, there was a great vibe in those stores and you met great people. So when we were opening, I just, I had had a dream, to be honest, that the dream was I, the name Elixir. And we were looking at the globe, different things, ideas, tossing them around. And after I had the dream, I looked it up and said, what does Elixir mean? And it, it was alchemy years ago. They would go into the, they would mix up their medicines and go into the de- the towns and tell them that they were going to give them like cough syrup. They were selling things that would heal them. And this, I know it sounds crazy, but that's how it originated. It was, and, and so it was a mix of things that were supposed to heal. And I just thought that was a cool name. So we spelled it a little different. Just so people wouldn't think we dealt in medicine. Yeah. So we spelled it <laughs> E-L-I-X-E-R. It's what you would call your retail therapy, right? Is your elixir. Very good. Yes. Yeah. yeah you're hired, Travis. Oh, my Thank goodness. I, I, don't have, I don't have a job now, Travis. Thanks. Yeah, that's cool. I, I, I don't know if I can replace you guys. I think the retail dynamic duo is all you guys. Thank um, you. What, so that is really fascinating. You said elixir has been open for 15 years. And I will say... It'll be 15 years in October. Wow. And I will say one of the first times we, when Deanna and I, my wife, my Deanna and I got married and we moved to Davison, when we stopped in, I remember how as friendly you guys were and how my wife just loved shopping there. And now we're getting to our age where our daughter is popping in there and checking out items that she's interested in. So it is, it's, you guys have a long history in our community and I, if I remind me, I don't think you're just, you're not only just involved in Davison, you have a second Elixir location, don't you? Yes, sir. We do in Lake Orion, Michigan. Lake Orion. So what, for those of you who are curious too, they're both clothing stores, but That's tell correct. us the, how you decide what clothing will be brought in. Obviously your Deanna is helping you. Your kids have helped you figure out certain fashions that work, but tell me what, how do you guys find the clothing getting brought in? And how do you decide this is going to be the style for the season and everything that, like that? It's like, it's mostly the research that Deanna does. Our customers update us on stuff they would like as well, too. But she's usually online seven days a week. I couldn't tell you how many hours trying to find the right product. And it's sifting through many pages of merchandise, tops, bottoms, excess, the whole deal. It just, it's a lot of work. So a lot of the times with the fashion she gets, which mostly comes out of the fashion district in LA, we're ahead of the trends. And sometimes it may not take off right away here in Davison, but it definitely comes back around and it does. So it, it, for her and my daughters, they're the big visionaries, if you will, for what they do and uh, the purchasing of it. I love it. That shows you right there that it is a family business. And I think that's what a lot of people love about what you guys are doing there. So now the next question is, I want you to take off your business owner hat and put on your DDA or Downtown Development Authority hat. Paul, how long have you been involved with the city of Davidson's DDA? I think my, I, I don't quote me on the exact amount of time. I think my first stint was about four years and I was just appointed again, uh, I believe it was in February. So I wanted to get back on, wanted to see some things happening downtown, get back involved with it. Cause having the two stores, I was spread thin and my family is always going to come first. And since both my girls are gone now, one's in college, the other one's moved on uh, and working in another state, um, I can spend a little more time in the downtown area. Nice. So now, Paul, explain to us a little bit about the DDA. What type of things does this board and group focus on? What is your all's mission? The number one is just the focusing on the businesses and the overall, say, welfare of the downtown area. It's not doing things for them. It's doing things with them and to make the, the, um, the, the entire downtown better. And as far as events or as far as fest, the involvement of Pumpkin Festival, the Christmas Parade, those are the things that are really, the, I would say, are the biggest things. 
many years ago, they had a few more events. We tapered it down a bit to focus on ha uh, making things happen in downtown rather than just events. So we now have an event coordinator who does all that, and it's pretty much taken it out of the hands of the board. We're just there to support her. And if there's direction that needs to be given, we will help her with that. So that makes well, sense. Well, that's a nice thing. I know I have been very fortunate to attend a few of the DDA meetings. I tell you, I feel like I am learning all the time between the discussions that the DDA board has, the events director has, and just everyone that's on that board has some of involvement to encourage people to go to our downtown. We have so many wonderful businesses down there, whether you're looking for an attorney or to buy some clothing or to go to eat. And then I, I really see that it's turning into something that even people from outside of the Davidson are starting to come here. Uh, and that's great. I love it. Outside of the events that we all love, we're getting more and more people coming here, which is, I think, a great thing to see. And, and I'm sure you see it as a, a different angle, too, as you're a downtown business owner, um, you're your family. So you're not only invested in a business, but you're taking that time and putting it into something else to help other businesses and create an environment for, I think, everybody, which is great to see. I love that. Exactly. I think everyone works really well down here. We're still getting to know each other, but I think in the long run, it's going to only be that much better. Yeah. So now, Paul, you mentioned a few of the events, um, and I know over the years there's been some either updates or they, you're trying new things. And what is an event that really sticks out to you that you have always enjoyed seeing in downtown every year or over the years? What is something that you've really enjoyed? Oh, goodness. I, I, we try to be involved in all of them, and I, I, I love them all. Festival flags, the parade, pumpkin festival, Christmas downtown, the, the Davison dog walk, which was great. And we did the Davison music festival. And then I love them all. However, the music festival was probably the most enjoyable for me because Eric Quimby, he has concept three down here. It's marketing. And he also is in a band called 595. He and I put it on together and it did it for three years. And it was nice to have music downtown in the streets. Uh, a lot of the work, we did it in a short timeline, and all the proceeds that uh, benefited uh, the VFW and then the Davis uh, Davison Middle School. So it, it, it was just wonderful, and that was what was great to see. Young, old, male, female didn't matter. Just came down and just had a great time. Uh, not to say the other ones don't, but had a little bit more involvement with that ownership, and it was awesome. Well, Johnny, I know you enjoy, I think we all enjoy different styles of music, but I think music is one of those things that brings everybody together. And no matter what genre it is, it's a way to just get together, hang out and enjoy things downtown. And so that is cool. I, I think I remember that those events going on downtown. I don't think I was able to participate at the time. We had younger kids, but that is, I, I love that ball. And I think it shows that our downtown can hold a lot of different things and things change over time and you never know when something might come back. So I love it. Well, one of the things that I am always very fascinated to ask DDA members or anyone that is in a position to help focus on business growth and development or events. And this is a hypothetical uh, for everyone listening. Paul, as a DDA member, if you had unlimited resources, what would want, what would be the first project you would really want to focus on in downtown Davison? Wow. wow. We, this is a hypothetical. We, yeah. No, not a hypothetical. I'm absolutely bringing this up to the next DDA board meeting. So I'm going to say, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Snyder said this. <laughs> okay. In that case, oh my gosh, Travis and John, it's, I, I I don't have one thing over the other. I just want the beautification of downtown. I, I, I whether it be the flower baskets, a stereo system downtown to bring to people can enjoy being down here, uh, facade grants to let the businesses fix up their buildings the way they want. It's it's only going to improve the downtown. Oh my God, there's so many things. I guess I can't say one thing in particular. I, I should say this: if the Downtown 
business owners, the merchants, whoever had something that they were unanimous on doing, I would also, I would support that because I think if anything, it's going to be a community thing, not just Paul having unlimited resources or the DDA having unlimited resources. We have to be careful with how we would do it. But I, I just want to, I would just want to see the downtown flourish. So let's, Johnny, we got a new plan now. We need to help figure out how to get DDA, the DDA unlimited funds. That way, all these projects can get done. Well, well in solidarity with doing that, I guess <laughs> you'll twist my arm. I'll go out and buy a Powerball ticket for tonight and let it be known that if I win the Powerball, I will give the DDA maybe not unlimited funds, but I'm sure we can find <laughs> a use for some of it. How about that? That'd be awesome. And I, I would chime in on that as well, too. So I'll play tonight as well. What a guy. See the things we do for our community. Paul, you're just a bastion of community support. I love it. Thanks. Yeah. Paul, in all reality, I know how much you and your family love Davison. And you guys always, I will say the the nice thing is every time you bump into your family around town, you're always smiling. You guys are always happy to talk to someone and take the time just to listen and brighten up their day. And I know I, another personal story for me dealing with Elixir, when my daughter Reagan was younger and we went to Elixir, you had some fingernail polish <laughs> and she was just eyeballing it. I think she was probably all four or five and you were so nice and you just let her have it. But I know as coming from a business owners, I'm a kid, my father was a business owner. I definitely know it, what you have to do just to help me make ends meet and be successful. But right there, you guys are committed just to bring a smile to a, a little girl. And I think that made a big difference in, in kind of how our family got to know you guys. But I, th I know you guys don't just pick and choose. You guys are always involved and smiling and happy. And so, Paul, question, and Kyle, like to always round things up. In your spare time, what is something you've, we've named so many events and activities in Davidson. What is something in our whole community area that you just love? What do you love about the Davison area? The residents, the community of Davison, just, they're always there for support. They let their feelings and opinions be known, which is fine, which is important. But if anything, they always come together when there's an event going on, somebody's in need, you can always count on the people of Davison. We have a lot of choices, places to be or where we could go. We want to be here in Davison. It's just the people make the community. I couldn't agree with you more. Paul, you hit, I think, the the nail right on the head. That This is what makes our community great is people who live here. And you guys, you and Deanna, are definitely very much a part of that. I am so glad that she got to join us for a few minutes as well. <laughs> we might have to do a, a follow-up interview podcast with her as well sometime. I think that would be fun. Uh, uh, so she'd be Paul, great. <laughs> she would be. And Paul, thank you so much for coming on. I know as the chamber director, I always appreciate all your support for the chamber and all of our businesses in the Davidson area and uh, just shop local support local, I think is the theme I get everywhere I go, which is great. Yeah. Thank you guys. I really appreciate Travis, the work you're doing with the chamber. Uh, I love to see what's happening and John, just everything you've been involved with. It's very much appreciated. As somebody with two beautiful baby girls that are probably going to be fairly fashion forward as they get older. I'm looking forward to seeing you face to face many afternoons after school when the girls are going to drag me up there to look at all those amazing clothes that Deanna sourced from the West Coast. Oh, well, awesome. You know what? And when you win the lottery, we'll, we'll, we should be turning into millionaires as well, as people, I would guess. <laughs> that is most definitely something that you can look forward to. All right. Thanks. Paul, thank you so much, my friend. Again, we do appreciate the time, the energy, and the enthusiasm that you have for the Davidson community. So. I will encourage those of you that are listening, take a chance, stop on in. Even if you're not going to buy any clothes or get anything, they're still such great people to go and engage with. And they will always welcome you with a smile. And you're such a valuable asset to our community. And we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. And love Davidson. Right, 
<laughs> Absolutely. As we as do we all. So Paul, have a great day. Travis, great to see you, buddy. I appreciate uh you let me join your podcast yet again today, my friend. This is a community podcast, and that's ah, what I go. that's what I love about it, is that it's for everybody. <laughs> that's right. We're all inclusive. All right, guys, thank you so much for the time, and we'll see you guys soon. Awesome. Thank you all.